Hi guys, welcome back. So I was scrolling on YouTube and I watch a lot of New York news. CBS, I came on a little segment on CJ Hendry. Now CJ Hendry is my absolute favorite pencil artist. She does a lot of hyper-realistic uh, work, and but with weird objects, uh, paint. But she doesn't paint it. She splatters paint and draws the splatter. So she is doing a show in New York City, and this is like one of the times that I just so miss New York, is going to the art shows there. I'm almost like tempted to get on a plane just to go to her show. This immersive artist is unveiling her new collection, plaid patterned illusions made to look like paint, but actually hand drawn with pencil. Now it looks like paint, but it's not, it's colored pencil. She showed a techniques video where she got up really close. It's only a couple of seconds long. I was looking at it and I was like, oh, she's glazing. And I recognized this technique. And then I started thinking, wow, I don't think I've ever taught glazing. I mean, I've taught other pencil techniques, stippling and blending, but I've never taught glazing. And it's a very useful technique. So I'm going to show you right now a short video that I did today of fire. Definitely want to be able to glaze. So I'm going to show you that we're going to come down, we're going to come back and I'm going to break down the steps for you. fire. I didn't finish, obviously, the whole entire picture. I did it just a small rendering. Uh, we're not going to talk about today how to do fire because I've already done that. And if more people want to see an updated version, I'd be more than happy to show you. I want to show you the technique for coloring this, which is a little bit different and how I got the colors to blend like this. Now, it's hard to see me doing it with a sped up video. So we're going to work on this picture together and I will show you how I've been doing it and we're going to glaze it. You're going to need a sharp pencil and of course I'm using my Afmat electric pencil sharpener. So here I have my orange pencil. I have a lot of black on there but it's not really black. What I've done with the black is I've actually glazed the color black. It's a very easy color blend and a very useful one to have. Write this down and use it. You get a beautiful black background with sepia on the bottom. Now it has to be on the bottom. And then what you want to do is you want to glaze over it with indigo blue. And I'll show you that. So here we have sepia. Now I'm going to take the pencil. I'm going to put it, well, this is about a 15 degree angle. And I'm going to put a layer on top of it of indigo blue. Once you do that, it turns black. So first of all, when you're using black pencil, you make a mess on the page. It's almost guaranteed. You have to really keep your hands off your pencil. Black goes everywhere. This does not. And you get a much softer black, much prettier black. And you can also gaze the temperature of it so that if you want an area that's darker and a little bit an area that's a little bit lighter you could play with that where when you're using just a black pencil it becomes let me see this black yeah it becomes very very flat see the difference in it if it'll pick it up in the light there's nothing it, it's it's it kind of makes your picture go black if there's any uh, other word for it, blah is probably perfect. So remember that it's sepia and indigo blue. You don't have to mix it where you go like this and you tightly mix it. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is glaze. And is this is going to be the same technique 
as I did with the fire. So let's get another piece of paper and I will show you how to do this. So now I have my paper and I'm going to glaze. Now you can glaze with um, Prismacolor, but it's much easier to, uh, to glaze with Polychromos. These are basically meant for glazing. And I'm gonna do a bottom layer. Okay, so I have a nice bottom layer, and now I'm gonna take a second color. And what you want to do, and what makes it different than blending, is I'm gonna go over this area. I'm gonna have my pencil lying as perpendicular as I can, okay? Without feeling uncomfortable. I mean, if you wanna uh, draw like this, so you could change your hand up. You want it as flat against the paper as you can and you're going to go over it just like this now the yellow is very light i will do it you could see it and i will do it with some blue also here we have the effect of glazing what you see is the green is really underneath. Now, with the yellow, it's kind of hard to tell. You really have to work at it to get yellow to be on top. But you can really see it with the blue and the green. You see right here how it changed color? It's not the same as green. It's not the same as blue. But you could tell there was, there was at one time green. You're just glazing the color over the top so that you could still see the color on the bottom. And that's how to glaze. Glazing is great when you want to add, like you, you're working on skin and you want to add a slight rosy glow on the skin, but you don't want to dig your pencil into the beautiful flawless work you've just done on the skin. That's when you would glaze like a rosy color over, over your skin color and where you'll be able to see that there is a color change there, but it won't be so dramatic as if you were had your pencil in your hand and you were digging into, into the paper trying to change the color. On here, what I was doing, as part of the last parts of this, trying to change it from just a drawing to a hyper-realistic drawing, what I wanna do is on areas I want to overlap my color. So here I have the yellow, but I want to add in some orange, but you could still see the yellow. Now the thing about fire is it takes hours. And here I'm working into the indigo and I want to just glaze it over. What I added onto here was a little bit of gray very light gray which one is this oh it's a gold it's gold gray um 967 which is probably about a 30 percent this is a barrel pencil so they numbered it back then um differently so you want to there it goes and i want to change that to a different color but i still want you to believe it's yellow here's another yellow i want you to believe there was yellow on it but I'm blending into the orange. Your gray-green light pencil from Prismacolor is one of the colors that you could do this with. It is better, it, it's a highlighter, is basically what it does. And watch what it does on black. It really stands out. Mark that down for your pencil trick, because this is a good one to remember. I'm getting to the end of the tooth on this paper, so it's probably going to be about as much as I can actually work on it. I didn't start out using a professional paper. This is just my regular cardstock that I like to, you know, doodle on. If I was using a better paper, I would take this probably another six, seven hours just working on it. The longer you work on it, the more realistic it looks. Yeah, I'm starting to lose too. 
move. <laughs> oh well. It was fun. This is probably a really good time to show you my new Athmat pencil sharpener. Brand new on the market. It just came out. I've had my eraser for years. And the only reason that my last eraser died was because I knocked it off uh, my table onto a concrete floor. I don't remember the last time that I charged it. The charge just, it's lasted me, it's over a year now, and it, I'm still on the same charge. So I know the quality of stuff that Athmat puts out is really good. I'll tell you that um, the last product that they sent me has been fantastic. I've been doing it's their blower. It is so it just knocked everything off my desk. It is so powerful. First, it's not rechargeable. I would have liked it to have been rechargeable. Maybe in the future they'll make this one like they um, are rechargeable, but it has a plug. This pencil sharpener was made for the artist. And what you could see over here is six different slots and it turns really easy. Now you could put the pencil in and make it fit. This is my Taihu one and this has been a staple on my desk for forever too but it's starting to die the problem with these and the other ones that i have is that the hole does not fit all pencils and i'll show you polychromos fits where is it my holbein now i love my holbeins i can't sharpen them in this sharpener I always have to get out a handheld one. And when I do sharpen it in here, it usually breaks the tip. And I have to really push hard or it won't work. Now, with this, pick the hole that doesn't fit into this one. It won't fit into the smaller one. The medium one, it's perfect. It's got about a three seconds spin for brand new sharpen. Now this is, hasn't been sharpened yet. So this should be about three seconds. And it stops. Now this is a pretty thick pencil. So it took maybe, yeah, about three seconds. And I have a nice tip on it. This is a very soft pencil. I usually do break the tips. Here's an octopus. Um, a hexagon, octagon, either it's six or eight, maybe it's six. This is a be actually a barrel jean. This is an old, old pencil. And again, in other pencil sharpeners, because it's not round, I'm always damaging the tip. And this is not one that I really want to use up. I don't even think the eraser, the eraser feels like a rock. This thing was put out maybe in the 1950s. Fits beautifully. In the smaller hole, holding steady. And good. Now, it's shaking a little because I'm not, I don't have the base. You have suction cups on the bottom. Another fat pencil is your Derwent's, the ink tents. They don't really fit well in other ones either. I have to switch over to either a handheld or find my really big one. Now, I just switch it on to large. Now I have to get this up. And this is probably a little bit too big. This is for really fat pencils. I don't own anything this big. My Lyra pencils, um, I couldn't find it for the demo. It fits into here. So we're going to put this on the medium one. This should fit nicely into the medium, which it does. Hold it down. But well, you don't even have to hold it down. And look at that point. Very sharp. This is available on Amazon along with all of Athmat's other products. And they have a store there with multiple things. You can get the eraser. Excellent. The blower is available. This is fantastic to blow out anything from your keyboard. Crumbles. From your pencils instead of smearing it across your paper. I just remember my old setup. I used to have this awful thing, that thing. All I was able to do, stick a book in between here 
my camera would sit about here on this and I would just film going down. I just got this yesterday and I'm so excited to use this. I got new lights so everything is nice and bright and this monstrosity that now fits across the table. No more shakes when I <laughs> erase something or I'm coloring hard. My desk won't shake like it always did because this thing would shake. See? That thing would shake. Now the whole desk can move and my new setup isn't going to move. I'm so excited. So with that, I'm going to get to coloring. Get out of my room. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.